Hi there, I'm Keith Cauley, and this is Thrive, a Bridgestone Americas podcast where we explore our company through compelling conversations with teammates across our organization. We talk a lot about the future of mobility in these conversations and the evolution of customer and consumer needs when it comes to the products, services, and solutions that Bridgestone provides. One place where all of this comes together to deliver on our North Star strategy is Firestone Direct, a concierge automotive service platform that brings the garage to you, installing tires, changing oil, batteries, and a whole lot more in your driveway or your office parking lot or wherever it is you might just park and listen to this podcast. Today, we chat with Angie Olson, the business lead for Firestone Direct, and Chris Allard, one of its mobile specialists, about how we've rapidly brought this dynamic business to life, where it fits within our Bridgestone ecosystem, and where it's going in the future. We hope you enjoy this conversation. So we are joined today by two people who are helping lead, grow, and deliver great experiences through one of our newest areas of business, and that is Firestone Direct, right? So across the table for me, we'll start far and move close, is Chris Allard. You are a mobile specialist for Firestone Direct, right, Chris? That's correct. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. And closer here is Angie Olson, the business lead for Firestone Direct. Thanks for joining us, Angie. Happy to be here. Yeah. So let's. we always like to start, as, as people who listen know, uh, with a little bit about who we're talking to, right? So now we'll go near far and work our way back across. But uh, Angie, how did you get to this role of leading this new venture for Bridgestone? Uh, and how did, I guess even before that, how did you even get to Bridgestone? Well, I'm, I joined the company in 2017. I have a past experience of doing everything um, n- not really sexy and exciting. I've been in the B2B, the MRO space for a long time. So what that means is I've been doing business to business and maintenance and repair things for a long time. <laughs> um, that's how you get this color hair okay. over over the years. <laughs> um, but uh, I joined Bridgestone in 2017, and I was leading the Firestone National Accounts team. So it, it's staying in that business-to-business space, um, working in BSRO. And in 2020, September, um, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to come into this startup and lead the team that was very small. I had one direct report and a volunteer army, and we have grown, and I know we'll talk about that during this journey, but thrilled to have had that opportunity. And it's really been, I've always worked hard in my life, and this has been the hardest I've worked, but the most rewarding at the same time. Yeah. Well, I think, and I think you hear that a lot as you talk to entrepreneurs or people who work with things from the ground up, and certainly a unique case in a company as large as Bridgestone to have something where you're one team and a, and a one person that is starting something from scratch, but excited to learn. And Chris, coming into it, I guess a little bit from the different side, Angie's on the business, kind of the building of the foundation and structure. You are then out in the field as one of the first people delivering this service to customers. How did this journey take shape for you? Yeah, absolutely. So I joined um, I joined Bridgestone in 2009. Mm-hmm. Um, I started at the stores. Uh, I started as just a maintenance tech. I knew nothing about cars, automotive, nothing. Um, and, you know, the plan then was to, you know, go to school, finish my degree, which I did, and then, you know, find the long-term job. Well, <laughs> I found that Bridgestone was the long-term <laughs> job, you know, and, uh, you know, I kind of grew with the company after that and, you know, went and, and, and worked, become a C-Tech and a B-Tech and keep moving up that ladder. And then had a unique opportunity to move into sales, something a little bit different because I was interested in a different side of the business, mm-hmm. right? And I got to grow there, got to become a service manager, eventually a store manager and, and really get to dive in into what brick and mortar was. Yeah. Um, and then last year I had the unique opportunity to really get on board with Firestone Direct and see a, a new aspect of the business. Um, and so I joined, I believe is end of August of 2021 um, and, and started with Direct. And, and that's where my journey's been is just <laughs> providing, you know, quality services to the boss and bringing it to them. I like that because it's, you know, you talk about the career paths and we've had other conversations on the podcast about the growth opportunities and wealth of experiences that Bridgestone offers because of how wide it, it reaches. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's another, you, you kind of come in, you don't know where it's going to go. And here we are 12 years, 13 years later. And Absolutely. it's new things. And from brick and mortar to the absolute not brick and mortar, right? We, we love a good origin story. We love the behind the music of things at Bridgestone. So Angie, tell us a little bit, you, you dabbled in the start. How did Firestone, I guess, what is Firestone Direct, right, to, to those who don't know? 
And how did this come to be? Yeah, so Firestone Direct is mobile tire and service. So we're bringing basically the garage to you. We're doing a limited suite of service um, at your work, at your business. And it has been, you know, a wonderful evolution from one van and one teammate (laughs) to um, in one market to now being in nine to 10 states um, and, you know, with a with a real trajectory ahead of us and a large and growing team. So, you know, we will come out and we can do totally contactless, totally touchless service. And think of the timing when I mentioned this too. Um, you know, we were in COVID was when we launched. I mean, really locked down tight COVID. I, I really didn't meet any of the team or this volunteer army that was helping build this business face to face for probably the first, I don't know, um, nine to 12 months. Mm-hmm. We did it from home. We did it over Teams and Zoom, and we we built an entire business um, while our mobile specialists, who originally were technicians, but we realized we were not hiring technicians. And what <laughs> what Chris and his peer group do are not just the basics of you know what you might find. They they have to be everything to our customer. They have to be able to you know drive the van, um, provide the service. They have to be able to perform. The service um, provide, you know, everything that that customer needs right there. And then um, so they're they're doing everything. And we decided we had to call them more than a technician because that is certainly more than, you know, appropriate. Um, Where are uh, and I know we'll talk about the evolution of it. But at the moment, where is Firestone Direct? Where can people find you right now? Yeah, right now we are in Nashville. We're in Atlanta. We are in North Florida markets like Orlando and Tampa, Palm Bay. Um, primarily. And then we are in the Carolinas. So Charlotte, um, uh, Greensboro, mm-hmm. Raleigh, Columbia. And now we are just launching in Houston, Austin. We're coming to Dallas. Um, and we're turning on markets in Philadelphia. Also, D.C., Virginia, Baltimore. So we are growing. Yeah. Listen to that. It's the South. It's the Mid-Atlantic. It's Texas, which yes. is its own section of the world. Yes. Um, but it just, and we talk, it just has been a couple of years, right, at this point. Yeah. Um, so we heard Angie lay out a little bit, Chris, about the needs of delivery for your position, right? You think of somebody going to one of our Bridgestone retail operation stores and you've got a store manager, you've got a team that some of it is front of house, right, customer service back of house that is the vehicle service technicians at different levels to Angie's point you are one guy or one woman in a van that has to be all of those roles together right so I guess what was that transition like from you coming from the stores now into this completely different environment yeah absolutely so um for me I, I think it's a little bit different than a lot of the specialists on the field because I filled every role in the store before so yeah. I kind of understand what everything um you know need what needs to be done if you will. Um, so that transition wasn't as difficult for me as it may be for someone who's never been customer facing or someone who, who maybe has limited experience on doing tires or something like that. But it, it does, it did create a very unique opportunity to break down multiple walls, right? So, you know, I am the, the trusted advisor. I am the technician. I am giving advice on what I think should be done to the vehicle, but it's not in a high pressure environment, right? So I... I'm delivering a service on on the terms of the customer, right? On the terms of the boss, which really breaks down that wall. You know, when you walk into brick and mortar, oftentimes your guard is up. And 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 that's natural, right? And and that's something as as a CST or as a manager that you you work with. You work to break down that wall. That's just part of the process. But you also have a wall in the back between management and and your technicians. And again, that's natural. That's something to be expected. We have the unique opportunity to break that down, right? Which is so cool. So we, we get to be all of those roles and we get to focus on one customer at a time, right? I'm not working on 10 cars trying to get everything done. I'm not rushing it. So I get to really provide that quality experience. I get to really have a huge open line of communication with the customer and build a relationship, right? So the customer isn't always just saying, hey, Firestone Direct's coming out here. No, it's it's Chris is coming out here. You know, Chris is Firestone Direct to me. And every single teammate, you know, as a specialist has that opportunity to build that relationship, which is super powerful, right? So you, you don't get that everywhere. So it's such a unique 
um, solution to an, an everyday, more complicated situation. And, and so that's, that's kind of what we do every day. That's where we live and breathe. Yeah. Well, I, I can take this in two different directions and I want to go in both, but we'll, we'll pick, cause I want to talk about customer service. Uh, cause I know that's such a big part. Like you said, this is a concierge service first and foremost to that degree. Right. Um, but first also like the, the business need, the business case for this. I think a lot of people see this as, well, if I got to get my oil changed or I need to get tires rotated or I need a you know, new tire, those are usually things for the customer that are an inconvenience in their day. We, you know, you talked about it. it we, we love tires, but to everybody, tires aren't sexy, just like automotive service isn't always sexy and it could come at inopportune times. Where did the the focus on wanting to do Firestone Direct start, even when it was one person and uh, and one volunteer kind of thing. Um, like, what was the business case, and why did Bridgestone decide to, I guess, invest in this? Yeah, I think we're listening to the customer need and desire. Um, the boss wants this, right? And we are really trying to hear and and go to where the business is and what, you know, we're evolving with the requirements of the customer. Mm -hmm. And overarchingly within the mobility solutions team, we're thinking about the future and how we evolve. You know, Bridgestone 3.0, this is where we are going. So as we build out overarching business solutions, you know, we will be adding to our suite of services. So we have Firestone Direct. This is, you know, maybe one of the more evolved solutions right mm now. Um, but you know, a along with products like Resolve, the subscription product that sits in stores today, you know, as we build out Bridgestone Marketplace that will, you know, connect some of these other products like Firestone Direct and Link in Resolve and other products to be coming in the future soon. You'll see more as we continue to grow. I the think this layers is in. just the beginning. Yeah. Well, and I think it's an important aspect of it, right? Because we talked to, to Brian Goldstein and we've had a, obviously conversations on all of mm -hmm. these sh episodes about the North Star and where things fit in. And this is part of that ABC model as we try to take the core you know, expertise, which is tires and rubber, but it's also automotive service with our retail networks. Yep. And how do we grow? I think a natural curiosity for people is we have Bridgestone Retail Operations, 2200 plus brick and mortar stores where does firestone direct and bsro play together or separate i guess where does it all fit yeah i i say we we play together um we park in the parking lots of bridgestone retail operations we yeah. share customers and we share leads with one another so we are very interconnected um you know chris can can talk about that all day long, you know, having come directly from BSRO. And frankly, it's one of our biggest competitive advantages. There is no one that can offer more than Firestone Direct and BSRO together because we are the total car care solution. And it's so powerful, um, especially in the the B2B, that business to business fleet space. Mm -hmm. It's amazingly well received um, because they really understand that the consumer will over time, too, because they need total car care. Um, but right now, you know, we we send leads back to BSRO. They send customers to us. And it is a really great partnership and synergy that's building. Yeah. And Chris, you talked about the different services. You were at different levels. What are the current services that Firestone Direct can provide? Because you can't, you don't, you don't have everything in that van, right? So I guess how did we select what goes into the van and how to, I guess, just design the menu of services? Right. right. Yeah. So, so it's it's always evolving, right? Um, you know, our our bread and butter, if you will, is really you know tires, obviously, um, oil changes, batteries, brakes, that sort of thing. Um, a lot of around the wheel services, um, and, and and that's what we're focusing on. But but we're not afraid to branch out you know we're not afraid to to say okay can we explore this option is this something we can do in the field or is this something that needs to go back to a brick and mortar and and what's so cool you know i talk about breaking down those walls i get to break down that wall for a customer if i need to recommend them to go to a, a bsr location i've i've already kind of set the standard that hey you don't have to go in there worried about having to you know someone get one over on you or something like that. I, I'm I'm only going to recommend a place to go that you can trust. Mm -hmm. and, and and I so I build that trust with the stores. We talk about building relationships. It's not just with the stores. It's also with, with the customers and the customers and the stores. So oftentimes, you know, we'll call in and say, hey, I've got this, this boss here. They need X, Y, and Z. 
you know, when can we fit them in? When can we can we go ahead and make them an appointment to to come down and get this alignment taken care of or or get this job that maybe we can't do out in the field? And it really puts the customer's mind at ease. It gets them, you know, used to going to the store if they're not already or if they are already used to going to a certain location, it just builds their confidence even more in in the name Firestone, you know, altogether. Yeah. So that that's kind of you know, where the services we can do comes into play and what we can't do and how we join the stores in, in, in that kind of ongoing, you know, evolving kind of battle, if you will. Yeah. And I guess you've been doing it for several months now. I, I, one of the questions, I guess, would be, where's the weirdest place you've had to service a, oh. a vehicle? Or, I mean, but it's it's a varying array of locations, I'd have to assume, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> I mean... So I, you know, my van personally is a little over nine feet tall. So it's a, it's a huge van. Interjection, real quick. I don't want to. Does your van have a name? Did you name your van? You know what? I haven't, and and, and now I'm realizing I should. Well, okay. So I, I came underprepared for that. <laughs> the, our our first van is called Betsy. Yeah, Betsy for obvious reason. Betsy. Yes. So we know at least one van has a name. Yes. Gotcha. Yeah, that's Chris true. Chris will be working on that for his yes. return to the the podcast. But sorry. Anyway, uh, what, the locations you've explored. All yeah. the, oh, the places you've gone. Yeah. So you know. <laughs> with a tall van, you know, we often get a lot of calls to, to parking garages, right? So how do you battle that, right? It, it, and, and this is where, you know, the, the culture of, of what we do comes into play. It's not, I have to find a solution. We find a solution together. We're always talking as a team. We're always working on teamwork. Okay, hey, I've got a customer in a parking, parking garage. It's seven feet tall is the maximum height. My van's nine. What can we do? And it's so interesting to see everyone work together because they want to they want to win. Right. We want to win as a team and we want to provide the best experience possible. And, you know, so we come up with creative solutions, whether that's somehow getting the car out of the garage, whether that's, you know, I, I think we've seen teammates carry all their safety equipment and their 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 tools up into the garage up several stories. I mean, so we're out here to take care of them. And so we have instances like that. But then you have instances where you're like, I, I haven't seen a building in two miles. Where are we? So you do get to to really experience a lot of unique stuff. Um, I think the craziest place I ever went was on a movie set. Ah. So they uh, I got to I got to go into a movie set and uh, they had one of their um, the vans that they I guess they bring all the equipment on had a flat tire. So we got to be the hero that day. Come out there, <laughs> change the tire, keep the movie rolling. You know, I was just trying to be like, can we get backstage? Can we now? Basically no. a stunt double at that yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. trying to be, but, you know. Well, they film The Walking Dead in Georgia, right? So it's only a matter of time until you look up and there's just a zombie walking around. As you're like, oh, wait, yeah, this is a, this is a TV set yeah, right, right here. I, yeah. I hope I'm at okay. the right place, right? <laughs> Uh, but and that's it's an interesting. We want to talk about customer service. Who are as we talk about that, like as you've launched the business and you've grown into new markets, who are usually the customers right now? What is that segment of audience that we're seeing that is embracing or using Firestone Direct? Yeah, we have a pretty diversified business right now. So we have a, bl a good blend of both that that fleet customer and the consumer customer, and we have been really clear, I think kind of since the beginning, that we are going to be maniacal about customer service. <laughs> and kind of funny story, our our back office team, the the group behind the the mobile specialists that, you know, answer the phones and take all the the orders that come in through through our website. They decided to name themselves. It, this is a self appointed title. We're making that very clear. Self appointed title. They have named themselves the maniacs. Okay. So the maniacs who are maniacal about customer service um, are are trying to lead that culture, right? I was on their team call this um, last Friday. So every Friday they get together and they were um, showing how a soccer team does this team dance to unify themselves. I, I'm kind of worried that the maniacs may come up with a team dance next and we're going to have to watch it. And I hope they rock it out when they do. <laughs> but it illustrates the point of, you know, just... How, how passionate that the team has become and how focused on that service and that culture has, has you know, just become core to who they are. Yeah. And I, I think it's critically important. And it, you know, it really shows up too in the, the, the customer service scores and the surveys we're getting yeah. back. And I have to tell you, like, I wake up in the morning and I look at the surveys and they are fabulous. And the one that just, it just continues to, you know, put an exclamation mark on top of everything is not just the fact that I always see the specialist names. So they 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 tend to know them by name. Chris did this, you know. Austin did this. Joey did this. 
again and again and again, I see it. But a, a customer wrote that I thought superheroes wore capes, but now I know they wear Firestone direct uniforms. Oh, this is what they're saying. That's what it's all about. And, yeah. and we and we live in a world, right, where people can share their either positive experiences or their negative reviews and complaints at you know the drop of a thumb on your phone and, and yeah. post it anywhere. So. The, the authentic passion for customer service is is wonderful to see because it is a necessary need in the way we do business, especially in a model like this. But um, you, we talked about plugging in. You talked about like Resolve and some of these other solutions that we can integrate. Uh, I understand we're using Azuga in, Atla in the Atlanta region of Firestone Direct. So some of you have listened. Uh, we did an episode on Azuga in season two and that acquisition that Bridgestone has made for fleet management solution. How are we, I guess, for either of you using Azuga uh, in Firestone Direct in Atlanta or beyond? Yes, we, we're we using it in Atlanta. We're going to expand. So for us, we are we are a customer of Azuga. We have the, the dash cams mm -hmm. in. Um, so that allows us to um, keep safety top of mind. So I talked about customer service, but safety is another foundational pillar. Um, when we started this, I was so worried that one of our specialists would be bitten by a dog, stung by a bee. I still worry about it's those things. a whole new array of things oh, to yeah. worry right. about. Yep. Yes. Right. I still worry about those things. Now I worry about other things. I worry about, you know, what will happen when we're driving down the road. You know, are we in safe neighborhoods? Well, the Azuga dash cams, the, the driving um, reporting that they give us is huge. So we're using that. Um, we're going to add that to our new markets going in and we'll probably upfit the remainder of our fleet with that because it gives us so much um, good information to keep our team safe. Yeah. It's such a cool thing to see, like, because we can read the announcements and the press releases and then talk about how we're going to do this in the future. But to see some of the pieces of the puzzle actually fit together and serve value for us as well as external customers, right, is just such a, a realism of what we're all talking about. W was the safety thing for you? I mean, you work in the store environment, so you know all of the pitfalls and, and dangers of a store environment. And we're obviously safety first always. But to Angie's point, was it a whole different experience of training and preparation for that? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, safety first always has always been a thing at the store, right? But I, I think Direct has taken it to a new level, right? Because at the stores, you have someone to help keep you accountable. Here, it's it's you. You are mm -hmm. accountable for you. So how do we ensure everyone goes home with the same amount of fingers and toes every day? How do we ensure that they're safe in traffic? And so, you know, safety really is top of mind. When I say it's an everyday conversation, we truly start every single day talking about safety. Um, we, you know, we collaborate on how to be more safe, what tools may better um, really support that. Um, you know, we have cones to designate our, our workspace. We're making sure that we have a safe lift process um, in play. We're making sure that we're torquing, double torquing, and then taking photographic evidence that we're doing that, right? We don't play when it comes to safety, and you, you really can't when you're, when you're out on your own in a van or even if you're with somebody else because there's so many more added elements that really can, can really kind of unhinge your day, if you will. So, um, you know, safety is top of mind. It's not, something that none of us take lightly. So um, Azuga is really, really does provide awesome data, you know, hard braking, you know, the, you know, how, how long the vans are running. We get to track all that and, and we get to work and improve. And so it, it's, it's a really cool tool to add to kind of our, our tool belt uh, yeah. and, and, and how we, really kind of rework safety every day because we always have to be adding on. There should never be a time where we're thinking safety second, safety third. No, it always is top of mind. Everything else is yeah. after. The foundational element. No dog experiences yet though for you? Uh, no, and uh, hopefully not not bad ones, right? So I'm a dog <laughs> person myself. So typically they just come up and smell me and they're like, hey, you got dogs, you're cool. So yeah. <laughs> let it let it roll. You yep, can change yep. these tires. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I, I guess as we close, as we wrap up, we are in a growth period right now. A lot of exciting things happening. Talk about the new markets we're going to. But I guess long term, right? What is this future growth plan for Firestone Direct on the road ahead? Oh yeah, we're nowhere near done. <laughs> so we're we're working to be in the the fifty major metro markets. So we'll continue to grow and expand quickly. Um, we're also really focused on you know being part of Bridgestone's sustainability <laughs> um, objectives and plans, and we're passionate about that. So I I want to to really help contribute by getting the company to be 
carbon negative. Mm -hmm. Think think of that. I mean, we could really make a contribution back as we move our fleet towards EV vehicles. Um, we have solar panels on our vans now to help reduce idling and consumption. Um, we move to EV vehicles. We stop vehicles, you know, two vehicles moving to a store when we do that because often, you know, you'll take your car and your mm -hmm. wife will come pick you up and, you know, go back home if you've got a service um, that you'll be there for a while. So that that we could really get to being a carbon negative co company um, and contributing back to reducing our carbon footprint for Bridgetown. Yeah. So big goals. We've got a lot to do. Exciting things. Yes, we'll continue to follow it. And I think I just heard the the wrench outside that my car is done, the Firestone Direct servicing uh, my car in the parking lot out front. Um, that's it, For full disclosure, that's not real. But I could imagine that that is a real case scenario. It's I'm in here recording a podcast and my car just got taken care of by Chris and his team. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's easy, wasn't it? Indeed. It's good. Full service. I like it. Um, but thank you guys so much both for, for coming and spending some time. I'm sharing a little bit. Uh, Chris, uh, excited to, to get you back out in the field to serve those customers. And Angie, excited for the growth ahead. But thank you both for taking the time to share. Awesome. Thank you for having us. It's great to be here. So from starting with just one van in one city for a pilot program just a few years ago, Firestone Direct now plans to have more than 90 mobile garage vans serving customers in 15 markets by the end of 2022. You can learn more about where they're at, what they're offering, their pricing, scheduling, and more by visiting firestonedirect.com. If you like that conversation, be sure to check out some of our other episodes wherever it is you listen to podcasts. While you're there, of course, you can give us a rating, a review, and as noted in season three, you can now watch some of our episodes via the Bridgestone Americas YouTube page. Just go to youtube.com slash Bridgestone Americas or search Bridgestone Americas in the YouTube search bar. And of course, you can always reach us via email. Just send a note to thrivepodcast at bfusa.com. Thanks for listening. I'm Keith Colley telling you to keep on keeping on. And remember that at Bridgestone, today, tomorrow, together, we thrive. Be good, everybody. <laughs>